Hi there, welcome to my How to Play Puyo Puyo video. This video is made for beginners to learn how to play the game. This first lesson will be about the basics of playing Puyo Puyo, the concept of making chains. But before we begin, let's talk about the difficulty of chaining. The last Puyo game that was released outside Japan was Puyo Pop Fever. Released on many consoles, this game is probably the most well-known game in the series. Unfortunately, the game doesn't really explain how to make chains. The only thing that's explained is Fever Mode, and that's not very useful. The latest Puyo Puyo game, 15th Anniversary, does have a tutorial mode, but for many people it's still lacking in explanation. With the lack of explanation on how to make chains, a lot of players play on luck. Let's take a look at four common tactics that are used by newbies to beat the game Puyo Pop Fever. One tactic is stacking Puyo completely randomly. When you pop the Puyo, you just hope that it might make some chains, because you have no idea what you just did. The second one is using fever mode only. You never attack, you just wait an offset until you get into fever mode. Another one is stacking all your Puyo to the left or right side. You pop the Puyo in the bottom, hoping it may set off the chains. The last one isn't necessarily a newbie tactic, it's called the stairs pattern. However, it does pose a problem if you don't know how to turn this into a 7 chain or higher. That's if you don't know what to do at the walls. We'll talk about this pattern the next time. Using these tactics may be enough to beat the game, but it's really not enough if you want to play against good players. Especially online, against Japanese players. And it's also a lot more fun if you know how to play the game properly. Now let's get started with the actual tutorial. Let's start with taking a look at the core concept of making chains. As you know, you connect four Puyo of the same colour to make them pop. If you want to make longer chains, you make sure that you do not connect them with four of the same colour. You do that by adding one extra coloured Puyo. In this case, I added a green Puyo here that disconnects the four red ones. If we pop the green now, the red Puyo would connect, and we have a two chain. To make longer chains, you repeat this process. You don't connect four Puyo, but you place an extra colour in between. As you can see, I did the same thing now for the yellow between the green Puyo. Keep doing it and you'll make large chains eventually. And that's it, that's the whole concept. It's really simple, but still it seems difficult to understand for some, and a lot of people still have trouble putting this into practice. So I'm going to make a chain again, this time a bit slower and step by step. This time I'm going to play with random colours, and I'm going to play as if this is my very first chain I've ever made. First we try to connect three Puyo, and I'm going to use these three red ones. Now we need a new colour, and I'm going to use blue Puyo to cover the red ones. We now have blue covering the reds, that'll make sure we can't connect four red Puyo. We finish the chain by placing the fourth red Puyo on top of the blue. Now we have our first chain, if the blue pops, the red connects, and we would have a two chain. We call our blue Puyo the trigger. This is because popping the blue would trigger the chain, but we don't want to trigger the chain, we want to build more chains. So the next step is to cover the blue Puyo, so we're going to completely focus on placing new colour yellow. At the same time, we place the fourth blue Puyo on top. And now we added a new chain. The yellow is now the trigger. Now we completely focus our attention on placing a new colour on top of the yellow, and placing the fourth yellow on top of that new colour. And now the green is the trigger. Just keep repeating the process. I think that's enough, let's trigger the chain by popping the green. And 
there we go, I made a 7 chain. As you can see, the field is really messy now, but it's okay if it's your first time trying. At this point, you should try doing it yourself now. Play endless mode, practice a lot, and try to make an 8 chain or higher. Of course, expert players don't make chains one by one, and don't make such a mess on their fields. For that, I recommend a lot of practicing and watching the next video. If you want to practice playing Puyo Puyo with other players, I recommend visiting Puyo Next to Us. Click on IRC and start chatting with other Puyo Puyo players. Go and ask them to play. We'll either play with the PC version of Puyo Pop Fever or 15th anniversary on Nintendo DS. For the rest of this video, I'd like to show you some replays of other players building a chain. If you want to become a better player, you should look up some videos and analyse how other players build chains. For now I'll show you three replays. If you're going to search videos on YouTube, I recommend finding videos with Japanese or Korean players. Alright, we reached the end of the first lesson. In theory, you should be capable of becoming a great Puyo Puyo player by knowing the concept of making chains. Next time will be about transitions and patterns. Alright then, good luck and see you next time.